What it is, what's up, got your podcast on the cut, uh, I believe this is Nugs from Heaven episode 3, uh, I may sound a little bit nasally, a little bit Gilbert Gottfried-esque, R.I.P., but the show must go on, uh, I contracted something, I don't think it's COVID, I don't know if you can say that on YouTube yet, they really put balls and chains on you, Pauls, if you said it a couple years ago, but Contracted something that kind of fucked me up for a little bit, I'm going to be honest with you. So because of that, I don't know if this voice might be the one you want to hear for an hour. So I'm going to keep this one a little bit succinct. But I did have some administrative stuff to kind of mention. Uh, I'm bringing back my Spotify podcast page, formerly Anchor.fm RIP. And as part of that, it also distributes to a few different places. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you'd like to see my Spotify podcast page, it is the Telesis, comma a societal podcast. Um, I'm gonna put it in the comments or description as well, uh, so you can just go there. There's a ton of uh, my old podcast material that's on there, and uh, I think it's far more stream of conscience. So if you like shorter. Uh, more YouTube adjacent content. I'd recommend going there and checking that stuff out. Um, for this, just to kind of mention a few topics and get into the meat of it, we'll be doing uh, Deion Sanders, which some people may not want to hear that. Um, and that's gonna be the only sports stuff you have for this this episode, Deion Sanders, which may scare some people away. Other than that, we'll be doing Spider Man. Um, Attack on Titan, and then some other miscellaneous stuff. Then some recommendations. Now, I'm going to flush the recommendations right now because I didn't do the recommendations, but I'm going to do that right now. After this break. I think that Cartier, the apparel merchandiser, Famous for their glasses. Should give a collaboration to Coach Prime Deion Sanders and make it sunglasses related. If you know, in Michigan specifically, Cartiers are referred to as buffs. And the mo- uh, motto, the mascot, and I guess the motto in a sense, for Colorado is the buffalo, which can be shortened to buffs. Just an idea. Uh, Dion of recently popular sunglasses fame and Cartier sun. Anyway, uh, I was going to just do that as a bit, but I do have some legitimate stuff to kind of go from here. Uh, So Dion has pretty much become the zeitgeist in a sense of football, I mean, you have Alabama, you have, I, I would contend as a short list, Alabama, Clemson for one week after they got their ass kicked by Duke, uh, Miami and Texas in the last week, but pretty much the biggest story in college football this season has been Colorado. Call of fucking Grotto, the entire sport that has brands like Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan, Auburn. I had to insert Auburn as a just it's mandatory duty. I would have got shot if I didn't. The biggest story in the entire sport is fucking formerly one of 11 self exiling to the Big 12 call of fucking Rado Buffaloes. They had Pat McAfee host there. The Rock Dwayne Johnson came there. WWE pulled up to Colorado. I I don't know if I mean WWE plans their stuff ahead of time, but they chose a hell of a coincidence of a weekend to come out to Colorado. They're the biggest story in Colorado. And those motherfuckers just won an NBA title for the first time since, like, segregation. I mean, like, this is fucking nuts. <laughs> okay. And there's, you know, I'm not going to go into, too deep into the, the recalcity trends. The people are like, well, I don't like the showboat and all that bullshit. 
listen, and I'm not saying he's the first one to do this. Um, reputable podcasters have mentioned other head coaches that have done the model that he's done. Mel Tucker, for one, who's currently beating some buff cases or facing some buff cases. Uh, that motherfucker's on another another shit. But this model that Sanders has done should absolutely 100% be something that we applaud because it's fucking the, the 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 way the game is going this is it in a nutshell you are getting paid and you're going to get paid more as years progress we're going to definitely at some point unionize and have real pay at some point especially once the NCAA model collapses big time football is going to continue to make money I think the sport is going to allow a lot of colleges to fail. That's just a fact to me. But the Power Five, and specifically the Big Two, are going to make a ton of fucking money. And the Big 12, as a result of some other conferences dying, will also make more money. So, yeah, fuck it. I mean, if you're getting paid money, dude, you have expectations. Sanders is a businessman, dude. Sanders himself said when he was playing for Florida State, prime Florida State, and Bobby Bowden, it was expectations. It was... Dudes get processed, which shit happened to Alabama for the last 13, 14, 15 fucking years. How many of those 2007 kids you think were given fucking minutes to in 2008 when they had real talent? My nigga Julio from Foley, Alabama. DJ Fluker, Robert Lester, all these fucking dudes. Mark Ingram. How many dudes do you think from 2007 when they were getting their ass kicked by ULM were getting minutes? Now, it may not have been as abrupt or heavy-handed, but here's what's beautiful about the Sanders methodology is that it's exposing the horse shit in this sport. College football and college basketball, to a certain extent, have always been the most horse shit sports on the ugly parts of the game. I mean, the NFL does it too. I mean, we just saw fucking Jerry Jones basically call black people, tell them to get the fuck out this country, dealing with the way it's being done. Uh, we listen. It's in, it's pervasive in different sports in different ways. Donald Sterling, but in college football and college basketball, it's always been bullshitting. It's always been that Sanders is pulling it back. The game is the game. Sanders experienced the game at the highest level. Motherfuckers are telling him how to build a roster. This nigga played for prime Florida State. Florida State at that period of time had a peak that pretty much matched just about anybody. He played in the NFL. He played for fucking Jerry Jones. The Cowboys. This motherfucker has seen everything. You can't tell him how the game should be played. The game is played the way it's played. It's not shoulds. Shoulds don't exist. If shoulds existed, the fucking Pac-12 would exist in that season. And it's not fucking going to. Colorado will be there. And nobody else will be either. There's not shoulds. There's factual assertions and as far as I'm concerned anybody that sh- that could have got Deion Sanders as a fact of the fucking matter probably should have will there be people that outperform Deion probably unless Deion basically replicates Alabama's and Nick Saban's run or Kirby Smart's there's going to be somebody that outperforms them in the last few cycles I don't know if it's going to be Hugh Freeze I don't know if it's going to be Shane Beamer I don't know who it's going to be but somebody is going to outperform Sanders in the last couple you know, cycles. And my predominant feeling has been anybody who made a hire in the last two or three cycles should have considered Sanders first. Even if you got Brian Kelly, you should have considered Sanders first. Because the simple fact of the matter is ceiling is everything to me with the way the sport's going, you know, in a few years. Everybody's on the cutting block. There's going to come a time where and I think uh, Stephen Godfrey always has the compliments in these situations. There's going to be a time where the cutting block meets some of these SEC programs. You think when we get to the Super Conference, you're going to have Missouri and Vanderbilt there? No, you're not. You're not going to have fucking uh, Wake Forest there. Just because you are rivals or you compete with competitive teams, unfortunately, doesn't mean you're going to be a part of the competition when it comes to the highest level. So, yes, I mean, I think if you can get a real title a guy that makes you a title contender every year, I think you should go for him. I'm not really saying that. Like, I, I think that you should say, hey, I may have a Brian Kelly, but at the end of the day, 
should I give Sanders a, you know, a real call, a real conversation, a real interview? Yeah. Auburn didn't do that. I know, at the very least, I know Auburn. Auburn didn't fucking do that. And they probably should have. Because, I mean, when you think about Hugh Freeze, Hugh Freeze, his ceiling is not Deion Sanders. I'm sorry to tell We saw his ceiling. He had the team that was better than Alabama on both fields two years in a row. And that team was not a title contender come the end of November. I don't think it was a good title contender in November for one of those years. The other one, I think he went 10-3, and three, got the shit kicked out of him by Bay? TCU. TCU, it was TCU. Um, yeah, I mean, like, this, you know, I mean, what, what are we doing here? Um, so, yeah, that's all I wanted to say about Dion. I don't want to ramble too much. Like I said, it's going to be a shorter one. Um, oh, yeah, I guess I got to talk about it. The fucking shit with uh, Norvell, the coach for, excuse me, the uh, coach for Colorado State. They're going to break the fucking score count on those dudes. Now, we got a situation where um, Colorado played a very competitive team or game against TCU, virtually equal. That's the one good thing about doing this podcast the way I'm doing it currently is I can go back and like edit this shit in live uh, time because basically I was like looking through my list and then I accidentally hit my phone on the damn desk count. That shit would have blew somebody's eardrums up. Um Anyway, so, yeah, I, fucking Jay Norvell. Oh, yeah, uh, Colorado, Nebraska. Nebraska played it hard for a half. I don't think Colorado could have run up the score. And I do think Dion has, like, morals, right? Like, I think he actually, like, has morals. Could he even, like, beat the shit out of Nebraska a little bit more? Probably. Um, who also talked shit, as you can remember, during the, the cycle, uh, the last offseason. He's going to fucking murder Colorado State. He's going to fucking desecrate Colorado State. Colorado State has had some relevant wins in the last 15 years or so. They're not going to get a single fucking win or competitive moment in this fucking game. Now, talking shit doesn't negate the fact that I don't think Colorado State's front or Colorado's front seven is that good. Their front, their offensive line is not always amazing. But they got fucking Travis Hunter, uh, Tavares Dawson, shout out Auburn. Uh, Brian Edwards, uh, I, they got Weaver. I mean, they got to fucking murder Colorado State. They might break the damn scoreboard on these dudes. I wouldn't be mad. And who could be mad, right? If you talk shit the day before of a game like that, you want smoke. You want 93 feet of smoke. Shout out to 93 feet of smoke. It's an artist I really don't listen to that much, but the name is fucking incredible. Uh, I believe it's maybe 93, 94 feet of smoke, but you wanted every feet of smoke, every centimeter of smoke, every Liz Cambage's feet of smoke, which is like fucking 97 feet of smoke. Um, shout out Liz Cambage. You want to get your ass kicked or you want to kick some ass and they're going to get their ass kicked. I think that's it. Let me check my list again without bumping the fucking desk. Let me check my list one more time. Uh, that is it for Dion, and I think that is it for sports for today. So we're going to do some fucking nerd culture. Let's fucking go, boys. Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Uh, oh my god, I'm going to sneeze. Fuck, please, no. Not like this. If you get a, a sneeze or a cough for me, bro, I can't help it, dude. My lungs, I don't know what the fuck's happening to those motherfuckers right now. Um... I've been playing Spider-Man 1 2018 OD. I bought it like a month ago from a thrift shop for $14. I'm pretty sure it's free on the PlayStation Plus collection, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, But, you know, I had to do it. As West Side Gun once said in the song, I had to break it. I think that was actually uh, Conway the Machine. Anyway, um, the game has been a fun, a fucking hoot. And if somebody was like, pretty much been reduced from gamer to part-time gamer to plebe to 2k game i think 2k players below plebe you know i i just i really didn't want to play it until i got to the point where like, 2k is fucking cooked i hate this fucking game i like it but i'm like no i can't do it anymore i gotta my palate is shrinking to a fucking what's the little uh the little animals plates i forgot the fuck they were called but like if you were a kid little plastic animal plates like in the 2000s shot the y2k 
those motherfuckers, dude, it's shrinking to that point, dude. Fucking pet animal, fucking plastic food plates. Um, so I broke bread and I threw in Spider Man. I was like, fuck it, we're gonna get this done before Miles Morales and Peter slash Sasuke Uchiha go to fucking town against Venom, which is gonna be fucking cool. Um, so I'm at this point, I'm like 62% done with the campaign. I had a few thoughts, just a few thoughts about Spider Man in general, but this game. Um, one, slice of life. We need a slice of life Spider-Man game. I need it myself, but we need it. You can't tell me that these massive IPs, dudes can't find ways to make like non-linear Spider-Man, or at least non like actionly like action franchises. I'm sorry, non-action action franchises. Shout out to anti-social social club i saw a motherfucker wearing a damn anti-social social club jacket when i was walking around downtown uh, like an hour ago it was an anti-stance stance jacket or whatever anti-stance stance club i was like bro are you fucking three <laughs> or 37 like what are you anyway um so i mean i don't want to say like full persona 5 which is persona is my favorite franchise of gaming ever um you don't have to do all that, but like, can we get like social links adjacent type stuff? Can we get like action? Not not action, not action. Um, like mini games. You know, going on, going around NYC on a walk in the town. Like here's here's what be here's an event. So let's say you're doing a MJ uh, social link, and you take her out to a nice dinner i mean this literally happens in pers- to a certain extent but it's all storyline it's it's not a side mission it's not interactive it's this cutscene. um you take mj to a restaurant and then you have a call come in and you got to handle that call something that happens in spider-man one but interactive you control it. I mean, you control the dialogue. You control blah, blah. pretty much like a social link, a confidant, storyline, uh, uh, ch- choices, stuff like that. Just, just dialogue. It doesn't necessarily be choices, but dialogue that you can kind of, can you know, like kind of like. Uh, I'm trying to think. You know, one of those games where like the, the storyline uh, doesn't really change no matter which choice you pick. Those type of games, basically. Uh, so something like that, I think, would be would be really refreshing. I mean, it's the preeminent. Marvel franchise. I'm not saying it should be done in every Marvel series or every DC series. Actually, if it was Batman, it probably should be done for Batman. But I think it would be really cool. And I mean, I don't. You don't necessarily have to do high school with Peter Parker. Um, you can get a little bit more, you know, adult if you want to. Like do the, you know, the basically the Peter Parker we get in Spider Man 2018. Uh, the high school one though would be pretty cool because I mean you kind of get a little bit more uh, flavor in terms of the, um, in terms of the non like villains or heroes like actually just npcs uh he has more of those in his life in high school obviously if you follow like, any spider-man canon uh ganon <laughs> i find out that don can't and you don't give a fuck about that but look up like don cannon uh ganon tag it's pretty cool um but yeah it's just more meat on the bones pretty much if you follow like, any spider-man canon that's pretty much the way it goes um as far as that, let me get past that to bad hoes like Miles. So that, that's actually how I read that on my notes. Um, bad hoes like Miles. So I, I've been asking some people, you know, do they prefer Miles Morales or Spider Man? Uh, see, now I just I just lessened Miles Morales there. Miles Morales or Peter Parker, and. You know, I was careful what I wished for, Parker, um, and I really was hoping to get Miles Morales answers, but I wanted just to see the makeup of the people who picked Parker. And I mean, I think, you know, and not really revealing the results of the, the study, I think personally, most people that are born in 2000 and 2000 on would say Miles Morales at this point in the juncture. If you asked them in 2005, they'd say Peter Parker. 2007, they'd say Peter Parker. Um, if you asked 2000 and up until Miles Morales came along, you'd just say fucking Peter Parker. Uh, so, 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 I mean, it's just cool that what would have been a close and shut case 
for my entire lifetime is now a legitimate question, if not favored in the minority answer here. What was minority answer? Because he's just that fucking cool. I think we really got to give props to Sony and, and all of them for getting that right. They got that character right to a T. If you do any lesser than that, he's constantly being... I mean, he literally came out at the same time that pretty much what I would consider the biggest stage Spider-Man has ever had. I think Tom Holland is the biggest Spider-Man stage ever, which he tracked the sales to make sense. The biggest stage real life Spider-Man has ever had is Tom Holland. And you can contend that Miles Morales... It's a cartoon, not an actual, like, real live action Spider Man. Has kept his weight with that Spider Man. The Spider Man that was adorned by Spike Lee, who Spider Man is like his favorite fucking character he's ever made him, as I understand. He's keeping up with that Spider Man, the preeminent Spider Man. He's doing that shit, bro. That's as good as you can write a damn character is, is a Moss Morales Spider Man. Um, and as far as just, I guess, Spider-Man, uh, 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, uh, I'm very fucking hyped for that game, dude. I, I'm exceedingly hyped for that damn game. That game, and the reason why is because the floor is so high. I know a lot of people, like, lose their virginity over these, like, high, like, ceiling games, but, like, very low floor, like, you can fuck up Cyberpunk, you can fuck up No Man's Sky. You can even fuck up Starfield if you're Bethesda. But you can't fuck up Spider-Man 2. Even if it's just Spider-Man 1. But you get to play with fucking Miles Morales and Peter Parker. And here's Sasuke Uchiha. Because that black Spider-Man sounds just like fucking Sasuke. It is amazing what Yuri Lorenthal did to reach, to, to make that guttural fucking noise that you just get when you listen to Black Spider-Man. He's a fucking dog in his voice. It's not the same voice that, like, jumps around making fucking quips to Kingpin or, or Fake Rhino. That's a different character. That's Sasuke Uchiha. Post-fucking Five Kage Summit, Sasuke Uchiha. All right. They can't fuck it up. They can't. They literally can't. I mean, they have 60-plus suits, I understand... Um, they have a symbiote, which can be used in conjunction with suits. They have Venom, who's the preeminent villain. Uh, some people are hypothesizing with them showing us Venom and uh, and Lizard so ardently. There has to be some secret villains. It's going to probably stay Spider-Man Universe. That's the advertising I've seen to this point is this Spider-Man Universe when they speak about the villains. So, I mean, even if they choose to do somebody at the end of the game that's different than Venom, like Venom isn't the big bad, which is pretty much how Ultimate Spider-Man went, which was my favorite Spider-Man game. Um, you fight Venom for a good stretch of the game, but the final villain, I think, is Carnage at the end of the game. Um, yeah, you. I think you're Venom and you fight Spider-Carnage and you, you absorb Carnage, and that's pretty much roughly how that one ends. Um, even if they like to do something like that, like involve Carnage, who I think is pretty, I mean, they do the Sinister Six amongst all the games. Like they do Mysterio, um, they do, do they do Doc Ock? I don't, I, I, well, let me see. I haven't finished Spider-Man 1, so maybe they don't do Doc Ock. Maybe they do. I don't know. I'm just, I don't want to spoil myself. They do pretty much most of the Sinister Six already, so they probably are going to do like Carnage. They do anybody. And that's going to be fucking nice, but. You don't need Carnage. You got Venom. You don't have to do Carnage. I don't think anybody will be mad if you get like a full-on game fighting Venom. Nobody should be anyway. Especially when the simple fact is you're going to get conflict between Parker and Morales. That's going to be a stretch of this game. Before you get to Venom, you're going to get Morales wondering why Parker reached the state he reached. And he's going to be trying to save Parker. That's going to be a part of this fucking game. That's going to be good as fuck too. You don't need Carnage. Yeah, you don't. You don't need Carnage at all. Um, so that's it for this section. Let's. I, I know I'm going faster. I feel kind of bad. Like I'm not giving enough like explanation. But I, listen, the game's coming pretty soon. Go get that fucking game. I don't care if you're a casual gamer or what. Go get that fucking game. I know I will be.
For a while, I heard uh, somebody moan, like, the second I paused on the last segment. I hope nobody's getting, like, fucking while I'm recording this, man. I, I would I would hate for you guys to hear somebody, like, just breaking out the fucking doors with their fucking backstrokes. I, I would hate to provide that content to you guys. I'm not really recording that shit by this point. It's too late for you to record it, so... I, I hope it doesn't happen. I, you know, I hope it doesn't happen. I'm gonna EQ this shit so it won't be too loud. Like, whoever is, like, Pog is getting stroked. There's not Pogs in Auburn, Alabama. I dodged myself a little bit by saying that, but there's no Pogs here. Um, Attack on Titan's name sucks. That's all I wanted to say. Attack on Titan, uh, the final season, part three, part two, is the worst part of any anime of all time. Like, the worst name. That's... I, dude, they're doing the last, like, five chapters for, like, an entire, like, movie or whatever. Just insane shit. Attack on Titan, somehow, like, without presenting the story the same way, they found a way to still fuck up public perception for the Attack on Titan brand like the manga did, just differently, just totally differently, but the same end result. It's fucking amazing. As somebody who, like, I, I have YouTube videos, I have an entire YouTube playlist for Attack on Titan, go back and watch that shit. I fucking hated those last fucking uh, couple of chapters. But the potential was always there. They could have turned around at any point. They can't turn this shit around. The train is off the rails. And this is not uh, the roller coaster tycoon. You're not saving that shit. It's done. But the anime was good the last few parts that I recall because it's been months and months in between each part. Um... It's been years since the fucking season started. Uh, <laughs> dude, anime is so funny sometimes. Um, World of Warcraft for... I don't know what this was in reference to. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, is it 2K? I, I, was it Spider-Man? Uh, what was this in reference to? Golly, man. I hate I didn't keep that fucking shit. I, this was a hell of a quote. I don't know where this came from, but somebody <laughs> actually I know where it came from. Um, the quote is "World of Warcraft for niggas." I'm black. World of Warcraft for niggas. So somebody suggested they should make 2K. This is a 2K24 thread on KTT. I should have saved the thread because the the quote I wanted to actually like quote the poster who said it on KTT but basically the poster was saying that instead of this bullshit way they have it currently where you basically like slightly tune the game year by year if 2K really wanted to just stick their dick in it they could just basically make World of Warcraft a continuous game uh, do large scale patches and then just focus on like basically keeping things fresh with said patches um, there. I, I guess their opinion was that that could be a whole, like, you know, immersive thing in of itself. I guess, um, an MMORPG of sorts. Which, if they did make only a online version of that game, it probably make more sense to do that. I think the reason why it'd be less feasible was because of the single player parts of the game. But if it was just Park and and my team or the online parts of uh, of my career and all that shit. Uh, rec league all that stuff it probably would be pretty feasible to do that like it wouldn't be that hard honestly because they don't really change the gameplay too too much to where that wouldn't be difficult to do uh, especially when the fact that they pretty much their update their large scale updates pretty much our entire year apart like they do small little like balancing or whatever type things but for the most part their big updates are every year so they probably could do that pretty easily I don't know if it's more value in doing that for them. I mean, I don't know how they could do it where it makes them more money because they get the MT, not MT, the VC either way. I would imagine they probably get more VC from the simple fact that you have to literally change your entire character year to year. So I'd say probably get more VC the way they do it currently. And they also get you to buy a $7 product every year. I don't know the diminishing returns and how many people buy the game year over year. I would imagine there's less people. Hopefully, you less people year over year because the fucking game gets worse year over year. Um, or at least more, uh, I feel like, plateaued at this point. 
So I don't know, but I would imagine the cost uh, probably also lessened a certain degree for them in making the game like that. But I, I think the revenue that they stand to lose probably exceeds the cost. So that's why I think they keep on doing the way they do it. They're not like lazy in that they want to just do less. It's just they can get away with doing less and still make a ton of money. So I don't think they would like do that model because it takes more work to put out a quote unquote new game every year. I think they do that shit because it just makes more revenue. And it's going to continue making more revenue, I, in my opinion. Uh, that was it for 2K and World of Warcraft for niggas and, and, uh, and Attack on Titan. I'm going to close out here with um, Apple Events, which everybody's complaining about Apple Events to hell. I can't really add anything else to that that nobody else has already said. But I just want to say, like, this was what has been, this is like climate change at this point. I think I think if you don't, like, understand why some people don't understand, like, why climate change got to where it got to, there's a lot of people who just put their head in the sand like an ostrich and just pretty much keep on going their day-to-day. Like, this this should be pretty much, like, noticeable if you follow society on any level. That's why I think some people seem, feel like we're living in simulation because they themselves just stick their head in the mud for, you know, cover their ears for years and years, and then something happens in their life. Like, oh, my God. I can't believe nobody else pays attention to this shit. We must be in a simulation. We must be being controlled. It's just simply put, most people, that, like, in any country, especially this one, don't follow shit that happens outside of their purview. But this, if you follow tech outside of Apple, this is what we've been saying for a while. And I don't follow, I'm a bit of a hypocrite and where like I've dropped off hugely since this point 10 years ago, even five years ago, even in following different streams of technology. I just don't for the most part. It's just not something that interests me as much. I used to be just a huge tech guy, like I always knew about tech. Uh, but I couldn't afford it. I guess maybe that's why it seemed more interesting is I, I couldn't afford it, but I was engaged with it. Now I just kind of don't care. You know, it's just, I've been rocking the Apple ecosystem for fucking five, six, seven years now. And I think uh, they've turned me into a sheeple for the most part. But the thing is, even as a sheeple, I still knew what it was like. And even at that point in time, 2015, 2016, when Android products were starting to like kind of reach a convergence point, you know, you had uh, HCC died out. LG was slowly dying out. Um, you know, Huawei was you know, China only. Um, it was pretty much just Samsung, and then Google started getting to the midst a little bit. But Samsung pretty much ate like the entire market share for Android. And people were just like, okay, so we're getting to this point where there's a convergence point for Android uh, options, pretty much. And then we got into the operating system part of things. Uh, everybody else had like everybody had their own like skinned version of the Android OS, LG, HCC, Sony, all these like buggy bullshit like uh, spam almost like apps that each manufacturer had, and it was just a thing where like Google came and made pretty much like almost like I think Samsung had like pretty much the most skinned back version of uh, um, the operating system as far as mainstream manufacturers went, but then Google came in and it just dropped the Google OS, and everybody's like, holy shit, we want this. And that's just simply what happened across the board in multiple streams of life, is that once everybody had the different options, and they saw the predominant players, they said, we want more like that. So then everybody had to, like, kind of shift to doing Samsung-like shit, um, and then more conventional designs. I mean, we used to have phones with, like, light bars at the bottom, we used to have phones that were like basically PSPs, the PSP Go, basically. We used to have all these experimental things, but like they didn't sell. But what sold was Samsung, and what's selling is Google Pencil. So we get phones more like that. But guess who always sold and who sold more and more and more and more? The fucking iPhone. The iPhone that does nothing special except they do everything right. And that's always been their calling card, no matter what they did, whatever curveballs they threw. Even if it was a bad pitch, you still know at the end of the day, the iPhone's going to always work to your general expectations. The battery might shit itself out in three years. 
the fucking thing might come so damn slow. You wish your shit is solved out in three years. But at the end of the day, it always fucking worked. Which, as somebody who used a ton of Androids, that shit can always be said about Androids. Especially back then. Maybe now it's a little bit better, but back then, fuck. The software part of that is just so fucking bad. And that's what Apple always got right. No matter what the design was, iOS 3, 4, the fucking, uh, like, I forgot what you call the iconoclastic style, um, the seven, eight, like the bubbly style, the boring ass thing we've been doing for like fucking ten years now. This current style, either they don't innovate, they do it right. Either they do innovate, they do it right. Eventually, <laughs> they always do it right. Eventually, it's like there's not enough of a fuck up from Apple's side, and that's what people want. People want. You did not fuck up. At the end of the day, that's really what they all want. So you not to fuck up. And Apple doesn't fuck up. They miss, but they don't fuck up. You can fuck up. Like, it's easy to do that. You can drop some shit that flops. What's the last time an iPhone did anything that flopped? <laughs> so it's just a thing. Where a high ceiling or, you know, medium ceiling, high floor product. I'd say even like low ceiling. Because I mean, like, pretty much you're putting the ceiling and the floor are damn it touching themselves. When it comes to Apple, it's just that ceiling though at this point is so high that it's like there's not too many companies fucking with them, you know. Yeah, that's just a general assertion about Apple, not even iPhones. Um, but to I guess speak to people's qualms about this event, it was boring as fuck. That's what Apple is. Apple is boring as fuck. Apple is in any industry you can think of that's just done it right for so long. Um, I mean, whatever you can think of, I don't know, Chevrolet, I don't know, fucking Nintendo, whatever, just a company that succeeded in this field so long that they have a process that they follow in and out. You can think about like Marvel, but like if Marvel doesn't fuck up, like Marvel's been fucking up recently. Um, if Marvel just made like Doctor Strange's, that are like pretty enjoyable movies that are like a little bit different, just marginally different every year. They just made those that were like still good, still entertaining. That's basically what Apple is. The problem is that Marvel has like Doctor Strange or uh, Thor, Love and Thunders, and and fucking Eternals and a bunch of other bullshit. Uh, <laughs> so they can't be Apple, but Apple can be Apple, and uh, Apple has been Apple for a while. Is Apple going to break the mold? No, because the mold isn't what they want to break anymore. Apple does not want to break the mold. Apple does not seek the mold. The mold is in a different room from Apple. It's locked away in a fucking box. Apple wants to do marginally better and probably move as little as they can. They're a fucking igloo at this point or an iceberg. Iceberg Simpson, that's them. They're Iceberg Simpson and they don't want to be anything different. So uh, expectations should be fucking lower to shit. And it's not just because of Apple. That's what technology is. Outside of the flip, which was pretty much a 10 years in the making type of uh, device, the Samsung flip. The Samsung flip has gotten crazy praise because it is a novelty in today's age. If the flip came out like 12, 13 years ago, it'd still be kishy. I mean, we wanted it back then. But it wouldn't... I, I think things like that came out back then, but they weren't like as... Like Samsung got it right. That design got it right. That was not a design that... The reason it come out in its presence 10 years ago is because it just they couldn't figure out how to get it the right way. But the problem is that so many gimmicky shits came out back then that it wouldn't have really been that different in 2013, 2014. Um, but in 2023, where you're pretty much getting the same phone, just a few deviances across the way, depending on which brain you go with. Um, yeah, that, that phone is a fucking game changer, or at least is a game breaker. I mean, what we've had, as far as the street goes, has been snapped. And uh, unfortunately, you know, I, I don't know if that phone is what makes people want to sit up, park up, and look around. But hey, we've been purchasing the same shit for 10 years, damn near, at this point. Like, we've asked nothing of Apple since Jobs died. Basically, the last thing we've asked of them were, we got, we didn't ask for the earbuds, but they gave us the AirPods, and that was successful. They gave us the Apple Watch, and that was successful. But... We really haven't asked anything of the damn phone in 10 fucking years. I mean, we got the Spotify competitor. Uh, we got Apple Plus. We got some We got apps. They focus on software. They want to get software right. But the fucking hardware? Uh, we've asked nothing of them 
in a 10 fucking years. And it's just a simple fact of the matter. All right, so that's going to be that for that one. I don't have much else to say. I had some more other engaging topics, but the voice, man, I got I to gotta give it a break. I know it's hard for me to cut it out because I, I got off the mic to take that break and like I'm my whole fucking body convulsed. Not literally. <laughs> don't call the police. I didn't literally do that. Don't, don't call 911 ambulance, but dude, my fucking throat, bro. Pause. Uh, just Rex to <laughs> leave us on a better note than that. Uh, number one, Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, hi, here we go. Uh, O-Rod of Waysian, uh fame. Um, the album is good. The album is very good. Guts. I don't know if it's in my top ten. I gotta really reevaluate like my top ten. But it's good. I recommend that. Uh, there is this breakcore individual... Uh, I, I think break chords, I would say that maybe, you know, these genres, you know, I just go on R.I.M. Rachel and and I just like look at, I just go like, okay, what the, what is this person? And they gave me five different answers. Okay, well, fuck me. Um, Full Body 2 is the name of the artist. Some break chord type shit. If you listen like Mimi Death, um, it's like in that same general lane, but like not as sample based as Mimi Death. Uh, I'm trying to think like who else is in that lane, but... That that type of like post hyper pop like kind of kind of shit, uh, collaboration EP with an artist named Epcot, named they are gutting a body of water. If you're experimental in what you like at a production, it's a very good tape. Uh, a little bit of Odie but goodie. Uh, the Mariahs and the album called Cinema from 2021. Uh, that was actually in my top 15. I'm not sure it's my, I think it was in my top 10. Um, that's just an album that, like, for some reason, man, every album, every motherfucker I know that listens to that damn album is a bad bitch. I don't know any motherfuckers that know that album isn't a bad bitch, bro. Like, there's a lot of artists that listen to some artists I like that are not bad bitches, bro. I like some motherfuckers that, I, shit, I like that whole lane, I mean, not the whole lane by any means, but the lane of the, the Phoebe Bridgers and all those motherfuckers. I know some motherfuckers that like those artists that are not bad bitches, bro. I know some motherfuckers that probably listen to Japanese House as much as I did that were not bad bitches. Everybody listens to Phoebe Bridgers, the Mariah, or Phoebe Bridges, the Mariah's uh, Cinema. It's a bad bitch, bro. If you want to be a bad bitch, in my book, go listen to that fucking uh, album. Um, and to close out, Spotify's new playlist function. It's... It's like Daily Mitzis, but it actually tries to like match your general mood with how you listen to music around different times of the day. Which is interesting because they ran something similar that wasn't successful and that they tried to do like a um basically like a combined uh, like part of the day playlist. It was like news plus like music you fucked with. Like daily drive, basically. And they did that, but the news part of it didn't really work too well. Um, I think they tried that that idea a few different ways. But basically, this is saying like, you're you at different parts of the day. I think it literally changed every three or four hours. Uh, you're you at different parts of the day, and we're trying to basically make music that fits you at a certain point in time. Uh, as far as night goes, I've gotten a few like spacey, ethereal type uh, nights. I've gotten ASMR type nights. Uh, as far as day goes, I've gotten like some like, southern rap type days, like, you know, kind of 11, 12 o'clock. I've gotten some uh, kind of like trill wave uh, playlist. And it means it's all one playlist. Like, it just rotates every, you know, few hours. So, uh, you know, it kind of makes you, it doesn't feel, really feel overwhelmed. Like, you don't feel like you're stuck to like listen to all of it, which is pretty much what Spotify tried to do. They used to have daily messages every like 100 songs. And they kind of cut it back to, I think now it's like 25 or something like that. Um, so they're trying. Guys. I always appreciate Spotify's like legit intention to expand with their auditory algorithm, uh, which Apple does not do. Uh, I, I went back to Apple. I think like, I've tried Apple. I don't say I went back to, but I've tried Apple Music a few times the last few years. And they never get close, unfortunately, in terms of uh, just algorithms. They just... 
they do a fucking woeful job in comparison. There's no real reason to use Apple Music if you appreciate music. If you appreciate the integration with your iPhone, by all means. But it, as far as music goes, Spotify fucking just curb stomps Apple. You know, and most people who listen to Apple Music like that, you use it. Don't really care about like the algorithms and all that bullshit, the misses and all that. Discovering music, uh, discovering like your friends' music in a certain sense. Um, that that stuff doesn't matter to them. They just want to like kind of use the Apple, like proprietary software. Which I don't want to go back into the whole Apple thing and cheap and all that stuff. But Spotify, uh, even when Spotify fucks up, yeah, I mean Spotify. Like they, you got they're just the like anytime Spotify like drops has an L, they have a W in like the wings. Like the whole TikTok feed shit they're trying to do. It's a fucking L. But I'm sure they'll drop some shit where, like, basically, you can, like, go in and, like, fucking jam out with your fucking favorite artist when the Apple Vision Pro comes out, the VR headset. That was a shock. That you can, like, probably just go in there and, like, play the notes on, like, Misery Business by Paramore. I don't know. Some crazy shit like that. They they always innovate, dude. That's... And really not... I don't want to say innovate, like, the way, like, the dick eat them, but just, like, they always do something that's, like, fresh. And I appreciate that, even though, like, sometimes the layout um, goes the way I don't want it to go. <laughs> That happens very often. The layout changes in not great ways. I'm still pissed about the remove of pretty much all like social functionality in the application. Every much like like just curb stomps the social aspect of the damn app. But what are you gonna do? Um, that's it for me. Spotify, please be more social again, please. Um, and for everything else I said, I hope you appreciate it. A little bit shorter, but I think you guys will appreciate it. And it's not that much shorter, honestly. Forty seven minutes and counting. Fuck me.